Howdy guys, just a quick video on spill port timing. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'm just going to describe it, just point out what to do, what not to do. Um, first of all, I know the factory, they've got a couple of videos out you know, for technicians and stuff on how to spill port time. And they make it sound really complicated, and they make it more complicated than it really needs to be. Um, the main thing is they want you to put well over over 300 psi of fuel pressure into the pump. So you got to plug that, the overflow valve off, all that stuff. You really don't need to. Because the reason they want that much pressure is to be able to open the delivery valve. Well, what you can do is just remove the delivery valve. Just remove that spring and the delivery valve and whatever not else in there. And then put it back in and you're good to go. You don't need that 300 psi. Then all you need is 10 psi. And then you come to the next thing. You don't even need fuel pressure. I mean, if you got like an electric fuel pump, sure, use it. But if you don't, it's just as easy to hook up a Schrader valve or something like, or not, or a uh, air compressor quick connect fitting to the uh, fuel system somewhere. You can remove the banjo bolt that would normally be right there and put this guy in. That's, or you can you can buy one of these. Or I I, I drilled out a bolt that's the right size, and uh, you can just put a quick connect fitting onto that. Or, since I was doing, playing with timing a little bit, I wanted something a little more more better, more faster. I uh, got a fuel line going to this canister here, which is full of air, supposed to be, and uh, goes to my gauge. Helps dampen the pulses nicely, and I've got this other one that I can just slip this little uh, quick connect fitting on. And uh, that, then I just open the valve, hook up my air compressor, and I just can put 10 psi air pressure on. You really don't need to do 10. I mean, there's nothing scientific about it. You just want plenty of pressure without opening the overflow valve. Once you open the overflow valve, well, there's, you just, you dump an air into the tank. There's no need for that. Um, another thing I'm going to mention is if you do have a system like this where you don't even have to remove the inlet fit fitting from the pump, you will want to uh, crank up the pressure to like 30 pounds and let that air push the fuel that's in the injector pump back out to the tank so all the fuel that's in the injector pump you're trying to get back into the tank otherwise when you open up this guy here it's going to shoot fuel at the hood i don't know how i figured that out you'll just have to be creative um so there yeah you got you just put 10 pounds of air pressure in there and you just you got that delivery valve get rid of all that stuff in there and obviously get rid of the lines like you would with the dial indicator and just watch that little uh, stream of air come out. One thing when you hook up the air compressor when you go from that zero pounds to just that little ten pounds it, uh, it vaporizes the fuel a little bit. I mean, I'm not going to try to explain it but it's, you don't even have to listen for air coming out. You can watch. Once you get really close you can watch that stream of air. Um, another thing I'm going to mention really quick is that you want to have the fuel shut off solenoid up and you want to have it up so that way uh, you're not Otherwise, you'll never get port closure because it'll never close. So make sure you have it up. Okay, so then you, uh, with this guy gutted, you'll just be able to get see a hiss of air. And when you're not anywhere close, it'll come out really, really good. It'll want to sho shove a lot out. So you just sit underneath the truck and you crank it up, or you know, with the barring tool on the other side there, and you just crank it until you hear it start to go down. And then you just go really slowly. And you'll get to see where this is just a little hiss of air. You don't need to close it off all the way. Reason being is because once you close it off, you don't know if you've gone too far. You'd have to go back to see. So what you want to do is just want a little hiss of air. That way you can know exactly where you are. Um, like I said, if you close it off, you don't know if you're half a degree past when it's closed off or five degrees past. You can, the only way to know is to back it off again. And the first... The fact of the matter is, if you're trying to be super exact, first, none of these guys from the factory are going to be exact anymore. They're 20, that's how many miles on these things. So they're going to be, well, there's going to be a one degree spread between them easily. Second of all, timing is a very dynamic thing. When you got the plunger going up, at low RPM, that, that spill port spilling off fuel. Once it gets closed, then it takes a little bit more movement to pressurize everything enough, and then it'll start shoving it out the injectors. Now, at higher RPM, that little spill part can't keep up when that plunger's racing up to the top. So that pressure in the uh, the barrel is going to exceed 
what the delivery takes delivery valve takes to open before the spill port is actually completely closed and you and that's uh you, you can confirm that by um, if you ask any pump shop they'll tell you that the, these pumps flow more at high rpm given enough lift pump supply pressure so the higher the rpm the more the pump puts out because the faster the, uh, the sooner the injection starts because the spill port can't keep up as much anyway a little, a little more detail than we really need to go there but um, all to say that if you're trying to get pinpoint accuracy there really isn't no point all it's more important to have repeatable results so just have that little stream of air and then have so every time you do it have that have the same amount that same stream of air you, you can it doesn't really matter you can I like to go when you can just see it wisping out just like kind of swirling um, not shooting just just a wisp out uh, and if it stops See, so you can't see it anymore. You just disconnect your air compressor, plug it back in, and that will vaporize more fuel again, and so you can see it coming out. And so it's really simple. Once you got port closure, then you just set the engine to whatever timing you want. So if you want 18 degrees before top dead center, you just put it at top dead center, then you re take the engine backwards 18 degrees, and then tighten it all up, and you're good to go. And also, when you do the time, when you uh, tighten the gear for the injector pump, what I like to do, and I found it works fairly well, is once you got it all good, you want you want to tighten it down. You tighten it down to about 20 foot pounds. Then you let it sit. You just give it a couple taps with your ratchet. I mean, you don't need to let it sit long, just 10, 15 seconds. And then you crank it down. And I think the spec is 144 foot pounds. But the, the reason you want to let it sit at 20 is just let it sit, set into place so it's less likely to slip on the shaft when you crank it down. I found that works really well. And it gives me very little uh, um, deflection from when, it, from when I uh, have it to where I have everything lined up and then I tighten it all up and I check it again to make sure we're good. Very little difference, if any. So uh, there you have it. It's really simple. I mean, once you have this set up here or you have your, your fitting that's ready to go, you can easily do this in 40 minutes. Um, one thing you can also do to sheet, if you'd like, is you can actually loosen up this uh, clamp here and then just take this guy off and you it'll flex over and let you do your stuff here without having to take the whole injector lines off and that takes off a couple minutes as well um, but hopefully that was helpful um, I think I covered everything I meant to cover um, so yeah